In this video, we're going to explore variables in Viper. We'll first go over state variables and then see the difference between public and private variables. Next, we'll talk about name shadowing in variables and then take a look at some built-in constants. I'll also show you how to declare a custom constant. And then I'll briefly go over the environment variables that are available inside Viper. State variables are variables that are stored on the blockchain. And to give you an example, I'll create a public state variable. We'll call this num, and we'll declare it as public. The type of this variable will be a uint256. So what does it mean to be a public state variable? Well, it means that you and other smart contracts will be able to read the value of this variable. So in contrast to a public state variable, let's now take a look at a private variable. I'll call this password, and it's going to be a string of length at most 20. Notice that unlike the first state variable that we declared, this state variable password isn't declared as public. And this will make this state variable private, which means that other smart contracts won't be able to read the value of this state variable. Here I say other smart contract because although it is not easy, there are ways for you to read the value of a private state variable. And the reason is because all data that is stored on the blockchain can be read. So you should never store sensitive information on the blockchain. So I'll write this down, never store sensitive data on blockchain. Now I'm going to show you an example of public and private state variables using Remix. So here I initialize the num state variable to 1 and the password to password123. And let's now see this example in Remix. So I'm going to copy the code and then activate Viper inside Remix. And then create a file called variables.by and then paste the code. And then click on the Viper icon and then compile it. And then we'll deploy this example. Once the contract is deployed, I'll expand the deployed contract. And notice that we can access the num state variable, but we cannot access the password state variable. And that is because num is public but password is private. All right, let's now talk about name shadowing. Name shadowing occurs when you have a state variable and a local variable with the same name. And in this case, Viper will not compile your code. So let's see some examples. So here we have two examples. In the first example, notice that the name of the input is num, which is the same as the state variable num. So this code right here will not compile. In the second example here, a local variable called num is declared. And again, it has the same name as the state variable num. So this code here will not compile. And to show you that these two code does not compile, I'm going to open my terminal and then type in viper source variables.by. And you can see here that the error says name shadows are existing storage scoped value. Lastly, this is another example of name shadowing. So this is a tricky one. Notice that we haven't declared any state variable called balance, but this code will not compile. So if I open my terminal and then try to compile it, you can see here that the code did not compile. And the reason why it didn't compile is because the variable balance is a reserved keyword. So in other words, self.balance is a reserved variable used by Viper. So you may ask, what does this variable store? And the answer is, it stores the balance of Ether in this contract. So I'll write this down here, balance of Ether in this contract. All right, let's now talk about constants. And I'll show you an example of how to declare a constant. So I'll say my constant. And we declare a constant by saying constant. 
and the type will be uint256 and the value will be equal to 123. So that's how you declare a constant. And this is a constant because this value can never change. There are some built-in constants available in Viper. Here I want to show you an example of two constants that are commonly used. Zero address and max uint256. So I'll write a function to output these two values. So you'll say external and it's going to be a read only function. So I'll declare as peer and name it get built in constants. And it will return an address type and a uint256. And inside the function, we'll return zero address and max uint256. I'm going to copy this code paste it into Remix, and then compile again. And we'll redeploy the contract. And let's call this function get built-in constants. So that's zero address, and that is max UN256. As the name suggests, max UN256 is the maximum value for the data type UN256 which is equal to 2 to the 256 minus 1. Lastly, let's talk about environment variables. Here I have a function that returns several environment variables. Let's go over what each of these are one by one. Self.balance stores the amount of ether that is stored in this contract. Later in Remix, we'll send some ether to this contract so that this value over here will not be zero. And that is the reason why this function is declared as payable. It's because we're going to be sending ether when we call this function. Message.sender stores the address that call this function. Message.value stores the amount of ether that was sent to this function. Block.number stores the block that this function was called. And block timestamp stores the timestamp in seconds that this function was called. And tx.origin stores the address of the original caller. Let's talk about the difference between message.sender and tx.origin. So let's say that someone calls a contract B and contract B calls contract C. In this case, inside contract C, message.sender will be equal to contract B, whereas tx.origin will point to A, which is the account that originally started this chain of calls. All right, I'm gonna show you an example of this function in Remix. So I'm gonna copy the code and then paste it inside Remix. Compile it. And we'll redeploy the contract. We're gonna be calling this function and we're also gonna be sending some meter so that this value and this value will be non-zero. So we'll send one ether and then call the function return environment. I'm going to click on the transaction log, scroll down, and inside the decoded output, you can see that the first output is non-zero value. And this corresponds to self.balance. Message.sender is the second value and that is message.value. The current block number is 3. The timestamp is this right here. And that is the address of the tx.origin. All right, so that was some examples of variables in Viper. Thanks for watching and see you later.